Hi guys, so we um, just did the um, interview slash advertisement for SGS Consulting and um, Mr. Enshel uh, Bowser, the recruiter um, who's really eager to have um, nurses join his firm and um, for him to find contracts out there for you. So only reason why I am still on this um, video, I want to remind nurses that um, this is now 2023. This is also, as you know, post-COVID. And um, coming from the mindset of both a staff nurse, uh, the mindset of a charge nurse, the mindset of a house supervisor, the mindset of a manager, et cetera, um, and the mindset of a temporary CNO, um, I understand the employee's uh, mindset, the agency's mindset, and the hospitals and the bottom line is they're still trying to recover so to speak from all the monies that they did put out during COVID. yes the government reimbursed them a lot for that we all know that i don't want to really get into politics uh, we don't know if they're hurting not hurting they got all their money back didn't get all their money back i don't know and i kind of don't want to know that information that's really not for me to um that's more like a cfo thing to deal with but I'm bringing this up because, because a lot of times us as nurses, I mean, I've done the same thing. You call an agency or they call you. Pretty much they call you because we really don't call them. They call us all day long, every day, usually six days a week for me. Um, the more your resume grows, oh, my God, the more they call you because they can see that you can be useful in so many areas in uh, nursing and especially in the hospitals. Um, so, and I've done home care too, so, yeah. So hospitals, long-term care, everything. So yeah, um, the more you have on your resume, the more they're gonna contact you. But keep in mind, the prices that were being offered during COVID, when they were high, as you guys know, they were anywhere from what? 150 an hour, 200 an hour. Some people have seen more than that, and I don't wanna say how much more, because I know, guys, how high it got. I mean, we're talking, mm. <laughs> It got high, okay? Whoa, like, I talked to a lot of my doctor friends, and they're like, you're getting how much? Or they're making how much? Uh, wow. I mean, we're getting, we're getting paid more than a lot of the doctors, guys. Yeah, because there was a, there's already a major shortage in nursing, and doctors really can't do their jobs without nurses. The nurses are very valuable. I mean, you tell me which hospital can run with zero nurses. I don't see doctors rushing to do bed baths. I'm just saying. Okay? They're writing orders. They're doing what they have to do. Nurse practitioners, too. We're writing orders. We're doing what we have to do. Um, and all of the advanced practice nurses with master's degrees and up. We do what we have to do. But are we jumping in there to take a, give a bath, do draw blood, all the things that nurses may do, give medications, et cetera? Um, so the answer is no. So someone has to do it. So that's where the nurses come in. And without nurses, hospitals may have to close up. So I'm hoping to God that someone from my hospital administration will see this video and still remember the importance of nurses and still be fair to us when it comes to salaries and things of that nature when we do choose to not go agency and to go hospital. Um, but in the meantime, for the people who want to go the agency route, whether it's with GS, um, uh, SGS Consulting or whomever you work with um, or you feel comfortable with, remember the rates are constantly dropping. Why is that? The rates are dropping because, again, this is post-COVID. A few COVID cases here and there, but not as rampant and, and as ridiculous as it was, okay? Because we have most of that under control now, thank God. We can save lives a lot better now, especially with people who have the COVID vaccines, et cetera. Um, so the prices are dropping and um, the hospital is trying to get back to the way it used to be, which is lower prices for nurses, which unfortunately will make nurses go back to feeling undervalued and unappreciated for the hospitals out there that may be listening, because that is how we feel, uh, which is why a lot of us go agency route. It's like, if you're not going to be valued and appreciated, then why not make more money? So that's really why agencies uh, soar with us. Um, but if they change that in the hospital environment, I'm pretty sure more and more nurses will 
come on back home and don't use a middleman to um to work through uh to work at a hospital so it all depends on how we're being treated by uh, upper management and i've been upper management a couple times and i treated my employees well which is why when i had to leave that hospital due to family emergency my dad was a little bit ill and um, he's wonderful now he's healthy but i was concerned so i rushed and left florida and came all the way back to maryland because i was concerned about my father me being the oldest child in the family and um the way I look at it, if I'm the oldest, I'm the one that should be in charge of making sure everybody's good. I, I put that burden on myself because it should be. Um, but my dad's great now. But when I left, from what I heard, a lot of employees left too. Well, why is that? Because they knew that I treated them literally like family. Their concerns were my concerns. And when you do that with your employees, they they work hard. They work well. They don't call out, none of that stuff. They, oh, wait a minute, she's a supervisor? Oh, she's, uh, oh, I love her. She treats me good. I'm not calling out sick. I'm not this, I'm not that. I'm going to work hard when I'm there. So I have that kind of loyalty um, from my employees. So that's what you need to do. But to, to get that kind of loyalty, you got to treat nurses well and treat them the way you want to be treated, not just like objects and bossing them around. So that's a little tidbit for the hospital people out there. Managers who may be possibly losing nurses, take that advice from me. You listen to me, you won't lose your staff. You don't have to worry about staff retention. Uh, that'll come naturally. But for you nurses out there who want to still do agency, just be prepared and know that right now rates are plummeting. So a regular hospital that may have paid you, let's see, hmm, let me use an example. Let's say they paid you 110 an hour. That same hospital, that same unit, that same shift may now be 70. Worse, 65. Much worse, 60. And it's going lower and lower and lower. It's getting so low that, I mean, really, it's like, wait a minute, I can make the same amount of money or more, especially if you have an awesome resume like me. I mean, most of the people that contact me, what they're offering me, I can make that staff with benefits and a signing bonus. I'm just saying. So, depending on your resume and your level of expertise, some of these rates may affect you. They may not affect you. If you're someone like me, who's very experienced, I've been in this field for a long time, and I've worked pretty much every single unit, like I said, except for the operating room itself. But I've done PACU, which is right after operating room, and cath lab, and all that other stuff, which is you know, a little bit of surgical techniques there. Um, but it's not the operating room, operating room, you know what I mean? Um, it's more invasive and a diagnostic type of thing, or a fix a quick thing type of thing. Um, but I mean, it's, it's, it's operating room, but it's not, it's not like you're getting a heart transplant, that type of thing. Um, but, um, with someone with my resume, it's hard for agencies to hire me because what a lot of them are offering nowadays in 2023, and this is like June in 2023, the rates have dropped so low that I make more money if I work at a regular facility because that's how low the rates are. But if I was a new nurse, well, when I say new nurse, I mean nurses that under five years. Um, I don't recommend agency for any nurse that's less than two years because you're going to get a lot of uh, assignments that may not be safe. And um, if you're seasoned, such as myself and other nurses, eh, you're done in your sleep, no big deal. But if you're not as seasoned and you're not as really great as multitasking and things of that nature, that's going to be a burden. And that burden can result in harming a patient. And the patient gets harmed. They're suing the hospital. They're suing you. You've now lost your license. And for what? All because, oh, well, I wanted to make a couple extra bucks. So I signed up for agency and I wasn't well groomed yet um, on my own, learning from my own experiences for at least up to two years. So again, the agency nurses that are new, and I mean new under two year new, tread lightly, don't just rush into agency because of a couple of dollars. Give yourself a good two years to get a good ground footing in this field and taking care of your patients where you can do it in your sleep and then sign up. Because what even what Ansel doesn't realize but you guys know, um, if you lose your license, his consulting company goes on. So does all the other agencies. But you, my dear, 
might be working at Mickey D's or McDonald's and supersizing somebody's fries instead of working as a nurse where you went to college to become. So it's not worth throwing away your whole career because you're rushing to make some money. So for you new nurses, slow your roll and give yourself a good two years to get um, seasoned in your craft, whether it's med surge, ICU, PCU, ER, whatever it may be, uh, long-term care, home care, whatever it is. Uh, make sure you know your stuff before you sign up with the agencies because they're going to go on when you lose your license. So don't lose your license. So, but for the nurses who are seasoned, I would say three years and two, two years and up. Um, yeah, prices are dropping quickly. So don't get upset and angry with the agencies because it's really not their fault. They are given a certain price range uh, from the hospitals and um, or whatever company they're using, whatever form, whether it's a Metaphys. And I won't go too much into that because some of the people are like, what is Metaphys? What are you talking about? But um, yeah, that's uh, a site where they go, where the hospital has already posted the amount of money that they're going to allot for the nurse. So they only can go up to a certain amount. Keep in mind, too, that agencies are a business. What does that mean exactly to you? That means that it's possible that if you're getting, and I know he's, he, Ansel and other agencies might be upset that I may say this, but I got to tell my nurses the truth because I'm a medical professional too, and I would want to know the truth if I was watching this video. So all due respect to SGS Consulting, and I do respect him, and I hope he gets lots of nurses. And I don't know if he does this or not, but I know other agencies do do this. Let's say, for example, the hospital is allotting the nurse $80 an hour. Okay. The agency might say to you, oh, we're giving you 60 an hour. But really, you can get up to 80 because they're going to also build the hospital their 15% or their 10% of your overall contract. So they're getting that money. But unfortunately, there are agencies out there, some of which I won't even work with, I won't even talk to. I've actually blocked them from my phone and told them, lose my number, lose my name, uh, lose my email. Because I'm literally blocking you from my phone and I'm blocking you from my email. I don't even want to talk to you. And those are the few that's out there who give a bad name to the good agencies. Like SGS Consulting is a really great agency. They're very fair. They're honest. I have actually a list of really great agencies. And if any of you guys want to know my personal list, uh, feel free to um, contact me on my email address. I will leave that link in this video, it's admin at skillsnacks.org. Um, or you can even just put it in the comment section. I do check comments and um, I can put some there, but I can give you a longer list if you uh, reach out to my email. Whereas the comment section may not give me the space to do all that because it's more than five or six. I have a lot of them that I do like and trust and have worked with. Um, but there's that few, oh, there's that few handful. My God, help me that are crooked and mm, <laughs> little snakes, I call them. And they may offer you, let's say the hospital is saying you get 80 an hour, and they'll tell you, you're getting 55. So let me get this straight. Well, what happened to the other 25? What happened to the other money? Well, they may be literally keeping anywhere from 20 plus dollars for every hour you've worked in their pocket. It's kind of like slavery, like picking cotton all over again. So you're working and they're taking a certain chunk of your money for each hour. So for example, to make math really easy for you to understand, let's say you were getting 100 an hour. The hospital says, this nurse can have 100 an hour. For the ICU, the agency might say, you can have 75 an hour. Well, where's that extra 25 bucks going? It's going in their pocket, that's where it's going. So each day you work, each hour goes $25 going to that company. It may not all be going to the recruiter, but it may be split up between the recruiter, the manager, this person, that person. Again, there's going to be a lot of agencies that's going to hate my guts that I'm saying this. But at the same time, my loyalty is first to my professional nurses, is not to the people that are sometimes stealing our money or manipulating us out of it. But then there's some agencies, like I said, that are very fair and very honest and very transparency, very transparent with the monies and keep in mind they have to stay afloat too i expect them to shave a little money off the top because that's how they stay in business they do their percentage that they build the hospital but they also uh take a cut unfortunately of our hourly rate 
They're not going to admit that to you, but I've been in the game for a minute, baby. <laughs> I know how it goes. I know the truth and uh, behind the scenes and all that. And I've looked into possibly opening my own agency at one point. So, And actually, I got a license to do so. And then I ended up going a different route into something a little bit more lucrative. So, um, and a little bit more stable, I, I felt. But, um, so believe me, when I say I know what I'm talking about, I know what I'm talking about. So, again, they have to stay in business. But to me, there's a difference between shaving a little off the top and taking 40% of my money. Okay. I don't went to school, bust my butt, got all this knowledge. If you want that much of my money, you should go back to school and get your own degree, and then you make the money. But don't take all of my money that I've earned because I took my a big chunk of my life and lived it in school, in books, you know, to study my butt off, and then living it at the bedside with nurse, with a patient, learning and growing and experiencing and doing everything I've done. I've learned from multiple doctors I've worked with. Oh, great doctors out there who's spent one-on-one -on -one time with me in the ER and teaching me how to read x-rays and all different kinds of things. So when you've done all that kind of stuff, it hurts if someone takes 30 to 40% of your hourly rate as if they went to school to be you. No, and think about it, no doctor is going to let someone say, look, hey, doc, I know you make half a million a year. We're going to take 200,000 of your money because we said, hey, he works through us and we'll give you the other 300,000. No doctor going to say yes to that, honey. So no nurse should say yes to that either. We're all professionals. We all bust our butt to get what we are. Um, yeah, so if they want to be us, there are schools always enrolling. So I agree that they should take some money off the top because that's how they stay in business. But when they're taking a huge percent that they know better they shouldn't be, they're so embarrassed of the fact that they're not going to tell you they're doing that. But I have been in the game for a minute, so I know the real deal. So if any of you nurses want to ask me questions or uh, email me, reach out or comment and say, hey, I was offered this, what do you think? <laughs> I have no problem with sharing you my opinion on if you're getting robbed or if that's really pretty much the going rate for today. Um, so, again, SGS Consulting is not like that. They're really cool. They're fair. And I recommend that you guys um, reach out to them and see what contracts they have available. Uh, like I said, I have quite a few um, agencies that I trust. SGS Consulting is one of them. Um, I have other ones. If they ever want to come on the show, they can feel free. Um, but I know this young man was eager to get on the show and tell you guys about his um, agency. And um, I gladly did that um, without any issues. So, um, again, I'm going to wrap it up. But just know, guys, rates are dropping. Why? Because hospitals are trying to get back to the normalcy of the way things used to be. They like it like that. They want it back like that. And it is what it is. I mean, the agencies have no control over what the hospital decide that they're going to pay. So, which is why a lot of nurses are going back into the field in terms of they're going back to bedside. And hospitals are making it more um, easier to do so um, by offering huge bonuses, like 10000 15000 20000 I have a friend of mine that was on my show. Uh, I don't know if you've seen the video. She was a nurse for less than... Oh my God, when she did the show, she hadn't even been a nurse for a year. And we worked together at uh, Sinai Hospital. MICU, SICU, uh, Trauma 1, Trauma 2, Neuro ICU. And she had only been a nurse for one year. And I thought she was just an awesome nurse, awesome. And because she's so awesome, I just said, oh my God, I got to, I got to do a show with you because you are, I'm very picky, okay? Very picky about a lot of stuff. Especially who I work with, because my patients are first and foremost. My patient is everything. My patient is my life. And I will not put my patient at harm for nothing. If I feel like I have someone working with me, even whether it's a CNA or an assistant, anyone who I think is half-stepping or half-assing, for, forgive my unprofessional language there, but if I feel you're not up to par, you're not doing your job the way you should, I will tell you, step away. I got my patient. That's okay. I'll do your job and my job. Pretty much get out of the room. Because I will not have any harm come to my patient. And so when you work with me, 
you're going to do a great job because I'm doing an awesome job. And I expect anyone that works with me, whether they are my staff members um, uh, my slash employees or whether they are my colleagues that's working at bedside with me, um, respiratory therapy, um, wound care nurse, um, physical therapist um, or uh, assistant physical therapist, et cetera, et cetera, dietitian, whoever. I want the best of the best. And I've worked with the best of the best. I've, I've loved my dietitian and my RTs. My physical therapists, they're all awesome. I mean, even a lot of med students who are still learning and growing and may need assistance from us nurses from time to time, even they are doing their best to, to be as best as they can. So I, I pretty much send people out of the room when they don't show me their best because I can't have the patient harmed. Patient is numero uno. Not us, not our egos, the patient. So um, this woman was so awesome that I couldn't even believe she had been a nurse for less than, um, a, uh, less than a year. So obviously, I don't know if John Hopkins or whoever it was saw my video, but um, the company that hired her, they gave her $20,000 bonus just to sign her. Keep in mind, been a nurse less than 12 months. I mean, less than one year. Um, and then she, I think she'll, I'll take it back. I'm sorry, guys. It's about a year and a month or so. And then they signed her for $20,000 bonus in addition to her benefits, tuition uh, reimbursement, you know, you get your regular perks, vacation, sick time, personal time, bereavement time. You get that automatically with nursing. But that's a lot of money for someone who's only been a nurse for under two years. I don't even recommend that she does agency yet. Per my own rules, you should be a nurse for at least two years. Not everyone will listen to me, but they should if they want to protect their license. And have their license for a lifetime, which I plan on having mine. Um, so, um, yeah, you want to protect your license so you don't want to do any kind of assignment that you don't feel comfortable doing. Do what you know and do it well. Um, and she does her job well. So if I was at hospital, I would have given her a $20,000 bonus also to sign with me because she's that good. Um, so what I'm saying is hospitals are making things a lot easier and more exciting to want to join back up with them and leave agency altogether. And they're doing that in addition to dropping and plummeting the prices as low as they can get away with. Um, they go too low, they're not going to get any, any agency nurses. Because remember, we're giving up benefits and everything else to get a higher rate. So they can't go but so low because that would be ridiculous and nobody would sign. Um, but don't get on the agency or your recruiter's case because your prices, their prices aren't as high as you thought they should be. Because they literally could have just dropped from yesterday to today. I've seen that. I've had someone call me and the rate was something like 100 an hour. Four or five days later, the rate had dropped to like 90. Couple of days after that, rate had dropped to 80. Couple of days after that, the rate was down to 72. That fast, all within, what, two weeks? So, it's, and it was the same hospital. So when I say the rates are dropping, oh, they're dropping and they're dropping fast. Um, again, if you're doing agency nursing, your best bet out of that is your stipend. So you want to make sure you are 50 miles away from that facility. If you're a local tra uh, traveler, a local uh, a local traveler means you, you live in the city and state. You live in that state that you're traveling to, uh, the hospital and um it's maybe with the, uh, like 51 miles or 52 miles or whatever. And you'll get that housing and meal stipend, which is 100% tax-free, totally legal. So that way, for example, if you made $25,000 on a contract, $5,000, let's say, was the stipend. And I'm using this as a hypothetical because you use the stipends a lot more than that. But for the sake of basic math, if you made $25,000 for a 13-week contract, let's say, and five thousand was the stipend. That's tax free. So when they when the agency reports your money to the government for your W for your time to do your file your taxes at the end of the year, and when they give you your uh, your W two or your ten ninety nine, because some agencies are ten ninety nine employers, and you're an actual contractor. Because I've been that one. Well, I'm contracting myself out. Because I am a business entity of myself. I'm a CEO of my own business. So a lot of times I like the 1099s because I can. I have a lot of tax write-offs because I have business write-offs. Some of you guys don't, and you might prefer to just do the W-2. Um, depending on what's going on in your life or what other things you're involved in. 
Um, so trying to not confuse you here. So for example, they are going to report to the government that you made $20,000. That's all the government needs to know. They don't need to know that you actually made $25,000. Why? Because $5,000 was 100% tax-free. It went for meal and housing uh, stipend. And you can follow up on what I'm saying at um, gsa.gov. Again, gsa. G is in girl, S is in Sam, A is in apple, dot gov for government. That is there on the, our government's website, and it tells you how much money they are allotting for every city and state down to the zip code, how much you're allowed to get for meals and housing stipend per week. And that could be anywhere, and I'm going to use some real numbers now, that could be anywhere from $700 combined to I've seen as much as $1,500, $1,600 a week that's tax-free. So that's the real reason why, for the nurses who've never done agency, that's the real reason why a lot of us do uh, travel uh, and agency nursing because that stipend adds up. That might end up being five grand for the first month. In your first month of this contract, that's all tax-free. You used towards paying your rent or towards paying your mortgage or towards paying your grocery bill or what other bills you have. Um, and that's free money. So that is why a lot of us choose that route as opposed to, oh, I'm going to go staff. Because when you go staff, 100%, unfortunately, 100% of your money is taxed, except for what you might use for towards health insurance or your 401k or your 403b. For some hospitals, they still have 403b um, before they can they turn into 401k. So depending on what's going on, and you can always go to your HR department and ask them, hey, um, I'm using this much money towards my health care. Uh, you know, um, I had surgery. I did this. I had to buy this medicine. This is the money I'm allotting for this. And I've seen your receipts for that to put in the database. I've saved this for tax purposes. Is that going to be taxed? And then usually the answer for that is no, it's not going to be taxed. So the government knows it's for health care. Um, but again, I'm not CPA. I, I know how to do CPA work. I'm taking courses in that, but I'm not a CPA and I don't work in HR. So your best bet, you call the person in HR and have them talk with you with the payroll person and payroll department will go over what's tax deductible and what's not. But pretty much for the, on a nutshell, most of your money is going to be taxed. So if you make $100,000 for the year at your staff job, the government's pretty much going to tax you for the $100,000. So if you're a 30% tax bracket, you got to give the government about $30,000 of your hard-earned money. But if your agency, hmm, and you made $100,000, it's a possibility that $40,000 is tax-free. So you're only paying taxes on sixty grand. okay? So let's say you're a 30% tax bracket and it's $60,000 at 30% with 10% is 6,000. So that's six times three. So 18,000 is all you have to pay on 30% of 60 grand. Hmm. Let's see. Let me pay $18,000 out of a hundred grand, out of the hundred grand I really made or me pay Forty thousand dollars out of a hundred grand I made. You tell me which one would you choose? So if you're someone like me who already has her own health benefits and things of that nature, it makes more sense to do agency because you may not need the hospital's health benefits. If you don't have any tuition, if you've already paid your tuition off, you may not need tuition assistance. And you know you don't need vacation time and sick time because first of all. You're not allowed to get sick if you're an agency nurse. <laughs> Just telling you that now. That's a bad thing. You don't want to ever get sick. Don't get sick. Take your vitamins, eat well. Um, but, um, yeah. So that's the real reason why for the nurses who've never done agency or traveling, that's why a lot of us choose that because you're looking at, at a, out of $100,000, the government may only expect 15000 in taxes because most of it, a lot, a big chunk, 40% or 30% was oh, tax-free. Out of a hundred grand, whereas if your staff out of a hundred grand, yeah, pretty much a hundred grand 
is going towards taxes. And the government wants, they want their cut. They want their 30, their 30 or 35%, depending on what tax bracket. You could be in a 40% tax bracket. Who knows? I don't know how much money you make. But if you're in about a 30 to 35% tax bracket, which a lot of us nurses are in, they want that much of your money. And that hurts to give away $30,000 that you've busted your butt to, to work for. So I'm going to wrap it up. This is I don't, this is too long as it is, this video. But um, yeah, just wanted to give you the real scoop in terms of what hospitals are doing right now in terms of lowering their rates, why they're doing it. They want things to get back to normal. Why nurses really choose agency uh, and traveling um, because of it's more money in your pocket at the end of the day. That's not taxable. And it is totally 100% legal. Um, and then, of course, if you do need benefits, if you have little children, and if, especially if you're getting older and you, your health isn't as all that great as it used to be, and you're someone have health issues or you wear glasses and contacts and things of that nature and you, your eyes are having problems or whatever, you might want to go the route of staff. Get a good, you know, life insurance. I mean, health insurance. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say life insurance. It's not like you're gonna die right now, but a health insurance policy, and um, go the staff route because the benefits may really be better for you than just getting the money, no benefits. Okay, um, so I think that's about it. If you have any other questions um, for me or anything you need me to clarify or explain, um, you can reach out on uh, my email that I'm, I'm putting up on the screen. And um, even if you want me to talk to you one-on-one, -on -one, you can leave your um, your phone number out on the email and I will uh, text message you and arrange for a time for us to um, chit chat for a moment to answer your questions so you're gonna have peace of mind about the decision you're making, whether it's um, agency or staff. Um, yeah, because I care about everyone. I care about the good agencies out there I love my nurses and my professionals, my doctors, my respiratory therapists, my wound care nurses, all the stuff I've, I've done as well. My, you know, I love everyone. My physical therapists have awesome physical therapists I've worked with. Um, they're all awesome people. Um, speech language pathologists, all of them, they're all great. Um, but I, I really have a, a soft heart for my nurses because that's what I am. And um, I want to protect you. I want to show you what you can expect in this real world and um, why things are the way they are from a managerial perspective and from a staff nurse perspective and from an agency and a traveler's perspective because I've been all of that and charge and preceptor and teacher because I also have a master's in education for nursing so I, you know, I'm a professor as well. So, um, yeah, uh, I'm definitely your girl if you have a question about something nursing related, okay? So you have a great day. I hope you got a lot out of this video. I hope you can make some really good sound uh, decisions and judgments based on where your career is going to go from here and who you're going to use or what uh, avenue to make your money, whether it is through um, SGS Consulting or other agencies or back home with the hospitals with the way it all kind of started, whether it's long-term care, home care, or hospital work, um, or even remote work. Um, I've worked for an insurance company before, so, you know, we've done remote work as well. Um, I think that was Sunshine Health back in Florida, a very, very good uh, insurance company. They really do care about people and uh, families, especially children, very soft heart for children, that particular company. They don't say no to anything a child wants. They say yes, even if it's not even in our rules. And we don't post approve it, they approve it because there's a child under 18. Sunshine Health was an excellent company to work for. If you're ever in Florida, that's your insurance company you want to go with. I gave them that free plug because I really do, did enjoy working with them. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, reach out to me if you have any questions. Okay, have a great Saturday. Today is June 24th, 2023, and you're in my home office here. So um, it was nice to invite you into my home and have a little chit-chat with you and SGS Consulting. So reach out to him if you uh, want him to go over some great contracts that are out there. Okay, have a great day, guys. Take care.